comrades, and welcome back to Shanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. My name is Sergey, and I was born in the USSR on a hot July day of 1971. Меня зовут Сергей, и я был рожден в Советском Союзе. My special thanks и огромное спасибо to all my supporters on Patreon.com. Thank you, comrades. It's greatly appreciated. So today we're going to talk again about one of the most prestigious and well-paid job in the Soviet Union, the taxi driver. Actually, I already talked about the topic of the Soviet taxi driver some time ago, uh, but recently I got some new information that I would like to share with you. My brother Artyom, uh, who still lives in Kiev, Ukraine, he is 15 years younger than me. A couple months ago or so, uh, he actually uh, took a taxi and started talking to a driver, and he started just sharing stories about being a taxi driver in Kiev during the Soviet days. And my brother um, actually managed to record some of that conversation on his uh, phone and then uh, sent it to me. So that's the story will be based on uh, this taxi driver uh, recollections. And I don't need to tell you that the witness accounts actually that's the most valuable information you can get ever. There's no comparison even with you know what you can find on the internet, stories or pictures. Witness accounts is the most <laughs> amazing information, especially when it's, he was talking about my hometown of Kiev because I'm very familiar with all the places that he mentioned. But before we start, I would like to mention several Soviet movies uh, that uh, actually show the life of the taxi driver in Soviet Union. First movie called Zelony Aganyok, Green Light. It was filmed in 1964. And what they're talking about, Zelone Agano green light, it's when the taxi is available, they had a green a little bulb is on. It's like inside of the car on the passenger side on the windshield. So when you see taxi car approaching and has a green light, Zelone Agano, it means it's available. If it's yellow, uh, they have a passenger and they probably gonna ignore you. Another movie that involves taxi drivers is Tri uh, Topala na Plushihe. Uh, three cottonwood trees on Plushicha, so it's like a street maybe, or some uh, name of the area. I have, don't recall watching that movie. Next one is 1971, same year I was born, Gentleman of Dachi. Direct translation is like the Gentleman's of Luck, but I think it's it's like a slang word for Gentleman of Dachi, is like the pirates, you know, the so that's criminals in this case. Um, so this is one of the most popular and famous comedies ever of Soviet Union. A lot of uh, phrases uh, from that movie became like Soviet memes. Soviet people don't go use, drive on a taxi to the bread store, kind of stuff like that. There's a lot of good uh, quotes out of that movie. And if I find any of those on YouTube, I'll post the links below this video. And the last one is 1975, Garajani, City People. And now back to our main story, life of the Soviet taxi driver in the capital of Ukraine, Kiev, in early 1980s. And of course, back then, uh, there was a totally different world. There was no Uber, no Lyft, no GPS available, no Google Maps. So the taxi drivers, um, there was a special breed, especially if you work in a large city like Moscow, Leningrad, or Kiev, you need to remember a lot of information, a lot of streets, uh, best routes, the worst routes, the most uh, pr profitable routes, and stuff like that. And you know, the taxi driver in the big city is like a professional fisherman in the lake. He knows the best spots where you can get the biggest fish, he knows where he, there's no reason to waste your time. So that's kind of similar situation. Really quickly about uh, the cost of taxi in the Soviet Union. So before 1977, 
it was a 10 kopecks per kilometer. So everything, of course, in kilometers, not miles. After 1977, uh, price doubled. Uh, so one kilometer will cost you 20 kopecks. Now, additional charge will be uh, so-called pasatka. So when they stop to pick you up, so pickup charge is also 20 kopecks. And if you ask a taxi driver to wait for you, for example, you're going to go see your girlfriend before you come home to see your wife, it's a two rubles uh, per hour to wait. And uh, also taxi drivers were required to be efficient. So they needed to have uh, out of every 100 kilometers that they drove, 78 kilometers should be paid driving. So he was allowed to drive only for 22 kilometers every 100 without uh, passengers. So the so-called efficiency was 0 0.78. And every taxi driver had a required amount of money he was supposed to uh, earn in a month, uh, so-called CASA. And it was 175 rubles a month. Uh, so he usually worked uh, 15 shifts, um, each shift about 12 to 14 hours. And so after working 15 shifts, he had to bring at least 175 rubles. And of course, it's based on how many kilometers he covered. So in Kiev, one of the most profitable routes was um, to stop at so-called flight uh, stops. So in Kiev, had a couple... Uh, we also had buses that were taking people from like downtown Kiev to our airport Barispol, uh, which is like international airport. So kind of similar like what O'Hara, for example, in uh, Chicago or JFK in New York. Uh, so people who are running late or they don't want to wait for a bus, um, taxi will take them. But the deal was that you pay the fixed rate, not what the taxi meter says. So for example, I believe it's like maybe 30 kilometers uh, from downtown Kiev to Borispol. So if you say 20 kopecks, so it should be about 6 rubles one way. But a taxi driver maybe will going to ask you to pay 15 rubles or 20 rubles. So he would tell you the cost and it was not what the meter will tell you. And of course, uh, airport Borispol was another uh, good uh, fishing place. So you pick up passengers there, and same deal. Uh, they pay fixed rate, uh, not the meter, and then you drive back to Kiev. Another great fishing spot was um, our uh, central railroad station, Central Zhlizhnorozhny Vokzal Gorda Kiev. And this guy that talked to my brother, he actually told quite an amazing story. So of course, in the railroad station, just like everywhere else, there'll be a spot uh, for the taxi pickup. And usually there'll be a long line of people who arrive to Kiev. You know, they have a big heavy bags. They need a taxi using subway uh, or public transportation will be quite challenging. Uh, but he said, if you want to make good money, you don't go to pick up just to, they call it to pick up a lumber. That's if you pick up regular passenger uh, who pays by the meter, it's called you pick up lumber. You park across the street so there was like there's a big square there so they park across um, many taxi drivers and then they put signs like they take in lunch break because they couldn't get in trouble because there were actually like people who were checking how the taxi and the service was working so you should have a, like excuse why you're not working and you why you park there so you have like i'm on lunch break or end of the shift so you like supposedly taking a break before going back to the taxi park and people will be just hanging out there taxi drivers they'll have like five or six taxi cars empty while across the street there'll be a long line of people waiting for a taxi and i know for the average foreigner like westerner american european guy what i'm telling you totally doesn't make any sense like why would you want to ignore passengers that are waiting because this is how you make money why would you park across the street? But it's Soviet Union, you know, uh, in Soviet Russia, taxi picks up you and you not pick up a taxi. You know, you don't grab a taxi, taxi grabs you. So they will be hanging out there and the desperate uh, passengers are the one, they know what's going on. They'll walk across and they'll ask how much, 
if they want to go somewhere. And usually the rate was double or triple the meter. So as I said, after 1977, meter was 20 kopecks per kilometer. That was the official rate. But taxi driver says, I'll take you where you need to go, but it will cost you 60 kopecks a kilometer if you're desperate enough. So this is how they were made uh, additional cash charging double or triple the meter. So now it's a good time to talk about the salary of the taxi driver. Average uh, salary was 150, 160 rubles. In big cities, maybe pushing 200 rubles per month. So it's just a fixed salary. Then on the top of it, they had so-called progressivka, like a progressive pay. And that was a monthly bonus for additional, uh, if you exceeded your plan, you brought more than 175 rubles per month, you get an additional pay. So you'd say, you know, taxi driver on average would make 200 to 250 rubles per month. But because all this uh, stuff they were doing on a bad day, like they'll call it shitty day, additional income will be 25 rubles per, per day on a bad day. On a good day, uh, tax, Soviet taxi driver could make, put in his pocket 50 to 60 rubles every day. So that translates, if he works about 15 shifts per month, uh, he would make additional 1,000 rubles. So picture, you make in 200 rubles and you make additional 1,000 in cash from uh, doing all this uh, non-proper stuff. So if, for example, if your salary two thousand dollars a month and you make an additional ten thousand dollars just for doing this uh, we call it so like a left side business being a taxi driver so huge additional income i mean taxi drivers were extremely rich and of course there'll be another quite like primitive um, ways to milk uh, your passengers so for example we have uh, if you happen to move lumber so you have a regular passengers like uh, my family every time we came from the village uh, on the bus we'll get in line and we get a taxi that never had changed so for example it will cost us for example two rubles 50 kopecks to get from the bus stop uh, to our apartment and of course driver don't have change so he, my dad will give him three rubles and he's like sorry i don't have any change and i remember my dad was getting upset because 50 kopecks, it's like you can buy a pack of cigarettes. Another interesting detail, uh, we had official nickname, like not really nickname, but if you talk to the taxi driver, the way you approach him, you call him chef. Hey, chef, padvizi. Uh, so like a chief, I would say. It's probably an English word that got some, changed a little bit sound-wise, so it's chef. So it's almost like a boss. So you also call your uh, boss at work, he's my chef. Uh, so this is how we used to call uh, taxi drivers a uh, chef. And uh, regular citizens, the ones that taxi driver called lumber, uh, they weren't big fans of taxi drivers because quite often uh, they'll be ignored. You, you, you're trying to catch a taxi, what we call Galasavaj. You stay in maybe under rain and there's a taxi coming with green light, so he's available, but he will just fly by you because he's on his way uh, to make more money than just pick up regular customer uh, he still has a green light because that you know if you turn the yellow light meter start clicking that's how you turn the yellow light uh, by the turning meter on if he's on the green light so meter doesn't work but he's still going to ignore you because he knows what the fishing is and he just so that was quite famous people frustrated they stay in for 30 minutes trying to catch a taxi and there'll be taxi with green light flying by ignoring them or a guy sees somebody's trying to catch a taxi he just turned the meter on just to turn the yellow light and will fly by you so that's another example how different things are when it's uh, government owned equipment gun government owns cars uh, they have people that take advantage of their position they have access to goods in this case they have access to cars and they make insane money i mean 
professor in university was probably making, I don't know, 400 rubles a month. Taxi driver making additional 1,000 rubles on the top of his salary. So poor customer service, crazy income, and you can stay on the street trying to catch a taxi without any success uh, for a long time. Well, I don't want my videos be too long or, or too boring, uh, so we're going to stop right here. I'm not done yet with the taxi topic. There's a, quite a few other things to discuss and share with you. So that will be my next video. Thank you very much. We'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Hey, by the way, a cool merch for cool comrades is available at the Ushanka store at teespring.com. Just a friendly reminder that my book American Diaries is available on Amazon.com or shoot me an email if you would like to have a signed copy. Thank you. And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Ushanka Show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life and soul.